Hey YouTube and all-wheel drive fans, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, stick around, hit the subscribe button, and hopefully at the end you will click the like button. We feature reviews on new cars, used cars, classic cars, collector cars, not to mention motorbikes, motorcycles, whatever you like to call them. Right here we have the double R, and then over on the other side we've got the tried and true, old faithful RC51, one of the bikes that's most dear and precious to my heart. To the left of me is Miss Sally in my household. Uh, today I wanted to bring you a video to talk a little bit more about uh, a car that I've had for a long time, a car that I've had a great affinity for, and a car that a lot of you have come to know me for. It's the RX-7. I own a 1990 FC convertible, and is one of my favorite cars of all the RX-7s I've owned. My first RX-7 was a 1982 model, and it was a base model. That was a very dynamically styled car for its day, but it was an extremely capable performance sports car. After that, I had a 1984 SE. I also had a 1984 RX-7 Limited, which featured uh, leather seats. It also had a glass roof. I also had a 1988 GTU, which is the second gen, which is an FC. All right, so let's get into this video. Um, most recently, I went to my storage unit where I keep a couple of bikes and the RX-7 to just, you know, check everything out, make sure the batteries were working and everything. I switched the bikes around quite a bit. The RX-7 most recently when I went to start it up while I was at the storage unit wouldn't start. It's never had a problem starting. Even when the battery's been out of the car for six months, I put the battery in, turn it over, and boom, it comes to life. No smoking, no sputtering. It just kicks over and purrs like a happy kitten. Well, this day it didn't do any of those things. There was no kicking over. There was no purring. There were any kittens whatsoever. Now, it is a 1990, and there are things that are going to go wrong. There are things that are going to need replacement, and you just don't know until it's time. You can do preventative stuff, but for the most part, you don't expect them to just go out on you right away. Well, if it's getting fire, then maybe it's not getting fuel. Could it be the fuel filter? They do get clogged sometimes, but I know that that filter was good before I put the car in stores, and I've started on numerous occasions. So I thought again, well, what else could it be? Could it be the pump? All right, so I've got a fuel pump here, and uh, I took the old fuel pump out of the car, and it was pretty easy to do. I was very impressed at how it was designed to be a fairly simple effort. And so I was able to go into the car from the trunk of the car, access the top of the gas tank, and basically what I was left with was this piece, which is sitting on top. Hoses connect here, wires connect here, and it just sits down in there and it's got a total of eight screws that hold it in place and a little bit of a gasket underneath to seal it. It works pretty well. It was pretty straightforward. I was very pleased at that. I love simple tasks when you're doing DIY. And what I did was I, uh, I took the pump out of the assembly. This is the old pump. And I essentially just connected it to one of my battery chargers. I have a Black & Decker battery charger. I have three of them actually for different parts of my garage and they work every single time. They also have uh, the smart technology to deactivate them once batteries are charged so they're not overcharging your batteries or, or causing them to uh, detonate or explode or whatever. You get this inside the kit. It's basically a lead that you can go straight to your battery post terminals. And what I was able to do with this was just connect it to my pump running a 12 volt, just like it would in a car. It has the positive and negative, make it very easy for you to figure out what you need to do. On this pump, which came off of the car, and this is the OEM pump from when it was new. I'm very certain this has never been changed out. And uh, uh, when I did this test, nothing happened. I bought a new pump. So the unit I bought was a direct fit OEM part, and it just goes right into the housing that the existing one uh, was in. It fits exactly the same way. All the pieces connect exactly the same way. I ran this test on this pump when I got it, so I know it works. What's left for me to do is put it back in the car, and uh, at that point, I'm going to take the car out for the first time in over a year. You may be having a problem with your RX-7. It might be fuel. 
It might be firing or ignition. When they have problems, it's a little tricky to figure out. But once you get past the fact that, yeah, it's a rotary and it's a little unique and difficult to deal with when you're trying to access parts and wondering how bad your problem is, sometimes it's not as bad as you think. If your car has been running and it's been running fairly stable, and fairly consistent, you're probably dealing with what every other car out there might be dealing with. Parts just wear out. Fuel pumps, one example. So stay tuned for the install of the brand new pump back into the RX-7. We'll fire it up. I'm fairly confident. No, I'm certain that it's gonna start. And we're gonna take it for a drive for the first time in over a year. All right, check out the next video.